In this section, we're gonna see how we can use our factoring to help us solve equations. So we're gonna be using something called the zero factor property. We're gonna first go over what that is, and then we're specifically going to talk about quadratic equations, because that's one of the biggest things we're going to solve. Okay? So what our zero factor property tells us is that if you have two things, doesn't just have to be numbers, um, because you're going to have expressions involving variables. If those two things multiply to zero, then at least one of those things must be zero. So the way you can kind of think of this in a concise form is if you have a times b equaling zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. The only way two numbers can multiply to zero is if one of them is zero. So the thing you wanna be careful about is this doesn't work if it's another number. If you have a times b equals six, it does not mean a equals six or b equals six. In reality, there are so many numbers that I can multiply together to get me to six. So just for some examples, you could have two times three equaling six. You can have six times one equaling six. You can have 12 times a half equaling six. You have negative six times negative one giving you positive six. You have 24 times a fourth equaling a six. The only way two numbers will multiply to zero is if one of them is zero. But if it's something else, it does not work, okay? And that's what we wanna to use to our advantage so when we start having expressions that multiply together equaling zero, it's going to force at least one of these expressions to equal zero, or it could be the other one. So we're looking for values of our variable, which is typically going to be x, that will make this equation true. So we wanna get zero equals zero. So anytime we're solving the equation, we want to try to get everything in its factored form. So we're going to start with this first example where we have two factors being multiplied equaling zero. So using our zero product property, that tells us this first factor is going to equal zero or this second factor equals zero. And then based on that, it gives us two linear equations that we then solve. So for the first one, we go ahead and add the one to the other side to give us that x is equal to one. Or in the second case, we subtract four from both sides and that gives us x equals negative four. Okay. So we have two solutions that will make this equal zero. And we're gonna go ahead and we're also going to check our work to show you that yes, these do work for us. So if we plug in x equals one, that would be one minus one times one plus four equals zero. So we're just plugging it back in at the start, which gives us zero times five equals zero. And that indeed is a true statement. So this is a solution to our equation. If we use the other value we found, negative four, that gives us negative four minus one times negative four plus four equals zero, which is negative five times zero equals zero. And that also works. So these are both solutions to our equations. So what we wanna do is we wanna write those solutions out. You can write it in a couple different ways. You can just say x is equal to 1 or negative 4, or it's a solution set, so you can put it inside those brackets as well. Either one is a perfectly acceptable answer. Your homework will tell you which form it's looking for. Okay. So looking at this next one, if I want to try to solve this equation... I will need to get it into this factored form to say this equals zero or this equals zero. So looking at these two things, they both have an X in common. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna factor out my x. And so what that leaves us with is two x in the first spot and negative three in the second spot. And now we get something that we have one factor times another equals zero. The most common mistake I see is that when you start with this expression, you divide by x because then you get something that's a little bit simpler. And that's something I wanna advise you to never, ever, ever do. You never want to divide by a variable. If you do this, you're going to end up losing solutions that way, and you're not gonna get the full picture. So you always want to factor everything out. But now that we have it in the factored form, I go ahead and set the first piece equal to zero, and we also set the second piece equal to zero. Okay. The first one luckily is solved for us. Zero is a solution. And then if I go ahead and I go in through and solve this next one, we need to get the x by itself. So we add the three over, and that gives us two x equals three. Then we divide by two, and that gives us a second answer of x equals 3 halves. Okay. And so again, you could plug these back into this original equation and see that they work. But our solution is x can equal 0 or it can equal 3 halves. Okay. If you tried to divide by x, what you'd end up with is you'd get 2x minus 3 equals 0, which is exactly what we got in this second equation. And so you'd only get a single solution. You'd end up with just x equals 0. That's why we want to avoid dividing by variables. So this leads into our idea of what a quadratic equation is. And really, quadratic just is going to indicate that we have a second degree power as our highest power. So it's something that can be written in this form where you have some number times x squared, a number times x, and a constant equals zero. Some of them could equal zero, so you might not have a middle x term, you might not have a constant, like in our last example. The one that has to be there is this x squared. So that's what makes it a quadratic. For these, it's a second degree polynomial. You're going to have at most two solutions to these equations. There could be one, there could be none, but there's at most two. You can never find a third. If you have a third degree equation, you can find three. If you have a fourth degree, you can find four. You could also have something that's repeated. So in the case that you get the same factor for both pieces, you're gonna get the same solution. To actually solve a quadratic, we want to use this factoring because we want to get something times something equals zero. So you want to move everything to one side, factor the polynomial you get, and then set those factors equal to zero using that zero fa factor property. So we're just going to try a ton of examples and we're going to go through all the different possible cases or some situations that we can and we wanna solve each equation. So again, remember, we wanna move everything to one side. We wanna factor what we get on one, because we should always have zero on the other. And then I wanna set each of those factors equal to zero. So this is where our factoring techniques are gonna come into play. So looking at this left-hand side, I wanna to try to factor that x squared expression I need my first terms to multiply to x squared, so I'm gonna go ahead and put an x and an x. My last terms need to multiply to 18, so I have a couple options there. Let's try positive six and positive three. If I check my outer, that gives me three x. My inner is six x, and that does indeed give me the nine x in the middle. So I know this is the correct factoring of that left-hand side. And now because I have these two factors equal zero, that tells me x plus six equals zero or the second factor equals zero. Okay. 
and then each of these I just solve. So I get x by itself by subtracting the 6, and that gives us x needs to equal negative 6. For the other one, we subtract 3, and that leaves me with x equals negative 3. So we end up with two solutions, which is the most we can possibly have. Negative 6 and negative 3 will satisfy this equation. And again, you could plug them back in up here to make sure that you get something that's a true statement. For this next one, we've got 9z squared minus 81 equals 0. One thing that's nice with this is you don't have to go through and factor out stuff if you don't notice it, um, like constants and all. If you want to jump right into just trying to factor this piece, you can. You might want to take this 9 that's in common to them both out, but I know in those testing situations, you might just, we need to solve it. It doesn't say we need to factor as far as possible. You might want to jump into just trying to factor first, and that's perfectly okay. Because I'll show you, you'll still get the same thing if I just jump into factoring. Because I have 9z squared, so that immediately tells me let's try 3z and 3z. And then we have negative 81. I'm going to try the positive 9 and negative 9 because both 9 and 81 are perfect squares. And so now we need to check the outer and inner, do what we want. So the outer gives us negative 27z. The inner gives us positive 27z. And indeed, those add up to nothing, so our middle term is gone. So this is a correct factored form. And now maybe here you notice, okay, all of these have a three in common, so I could take three out, but it really doesn't do anything except make our lives a little bit easier in the solving each factor process. So from here, again, I can just jump and say that one factor has to equal zero or this other factor will equal zero. They're both solved in a similar way, so we subtract the 9 from both sides. That gives us 3z equals negative 9. And then we divide by 3, and that gives us z is equal to negative 3. That's going to be one of our solutions. For the second one, we do almost identical, but we add 9 instead. And so that gives us 3z equals positive 9. And then we still divide by 3. And that gives us the second solution of z equaling positive 3. Okay. And so we get our two solutions that we need. But again, if you wanted to instead factor out the 9 immediately, that would leave us with z squared minus 9 equals zero, and then that would factor really nicely into z plus three, z minus three equals zero, and so you get z plus three equals zero, or z minus three equals zero, and they both give you exactly the same answers, positive three and negative three. So it saves you a little work for sure if you factor that out but if you don't notice it, it's perfectly okay. You'll still get to the same conclusions. Now for these next ones, we're going to start running into the more complicated issues. Because remember, I want a zero on one side. And these don't have that. So for both of these problems, I instead need to move everything to one side. And this one especially is going to be more complicated. So here, I want to get a zero on one side, so I need to move my pieces over. You could subtract the 16 from both sides, but me personally, I like my x squared to be positive, so I'm going to go ahead and actually add these to the other side. And in doing so, it leaves us with a zero, and on the right-hand side, we'll have x squared plus 8x plus 16. 
So it makes it so everything is positive, which is much nicer to work with. And now the right-hand side of that equation, we can go ahead and try and factor. So to get x squared, they both need x. My instinct is it's a positive 16, so let's try 4 and 4. And so our first and last terms are good. The outer is 4x. The inner is 4x. That indeed adds up to the 8x in the middle. So this is the correct factoring. Okay. So really, for this one, if I set each factor equal to 0, I'm solving the same equation. We go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides on both equations. For the first piece, you get x equals negative 4. For the second piece, you get x is equal to negative 4. So this is that case where we have a repeated solution. So we only have a single value, x equaling negative 4, that will solve this equation. And that's okay. okay. All right, so now let's try this next one where unfortunately we already have something factored, but it does not equal zero. So I cannot actually apply my zero product property. Instead, what I wanna do is I wanna be able to move this over and refactor. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna foil the left-hand side. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply the first terms, which gives us x squared. The outer gives us negative 2x. The inner gives us positive 8x. And then the last gives us minus 16. And this is equal to negative 21. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and condense my two terms on the left-hand side. That's really x squared plus 6x minus 16 equals negative 21. And again, we need to get a zero, so I want to move the 21 to the other side. And that gives us x squared plus 6x plus 5 equals zero. And from here, now I want to try to factor it. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. To get to x squared, we use x and x. Luckily for 5, we don't have a ton of options. So 5 and 1 multiply to 5, and let's make them both positive. The outer term gives us a single x. The inner term gives us 5x, which indeed adds up to the correct middle term of 6x. So we've factored this correctly. So now we go ahead and set each factor equal to 0. And to solve, we subtract the 5 from both sides to get x equals negative 5. And for the other one, we subtract the 1 from both sides to get x equals negative 1. So these are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. For our last two examples, we're not going to do quadratics anymore. We're going to do third-degree polynomials. So again, we can have three possible solutions for each of these. And so starting with this first one, if I look, none of those terms have a number in common. They also all don't have an x. So I've got four terms. This tells me my grouping is probably going to be the best-case scenario. So I'm going to group the first two terms, and then I'm going to group these second two terms. Okay. So we'll go ahead and set that up. We've got x cubed minus 6x squared. I'm going to take the minus sign out, and that's going to leave us with 9x minus 54. From my first two pieces, they both have an x squared in common. If I take out two of these x's that leaves me with one in the front and just that minus six in the back and then both nine and 54 are divisible by nine so we go ahead and take that out and that leaves us with x 
And in the second piece, we have a minus 6. Okay. So in these individual groupings we have factored, they now both have an x minus 6 in common. So we go ahead and factor that out. It leaves us with x squared in the first piece, minus 9 in the second piece. And that equals 0. So from here, I want to see this is as far as x minus 6 can be factored. But now I've ended with a quadratic. And it happens to be that it has no middle term, so it is a special piece. It does factor nicely into x and x. To get minus 9, we do plus 3 and minus 3. So this way, the outer and inner terms cancel. So this is as far as we can possibly factor it, which is great, because now we get to use our zero factor property. So we set x minus 6 equal to 0, or x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. And for each of these, we just have to move the constant to the other side. So we add 6, subtract 3, add 3. And that gives us three solutions, x equals 6, x equals negative 3, and x equals positive 3. So our solution set is exactly those numbers, and we'll put them in increasing order, negative 3, 3, and 6. So we just have one more example. And again, it's a third degree polynomial, so there are three possible answers. It does not have four terms like the last one. And if I look, every single term has an x. So again, I want to factor out the first thing I see that all terms have in common. So we're going to start by taking out the x. That leaves us with two x's in the first spot, a single x in the second, and just the constant in the third. And now that leaves me with a trinomial of second degree that I can go ahead and try to factor. So we're gonna set up our parentheses. We need to get to six x squared. One way we can do that is three x and two x. And then for the last term, I have to get to negative 5. I can only really do that one of two ways. I need a 1 and a 5. One has to be positive and one has to be negative. So let's try this route. If I go ahead and look at the outer terms, that's positive 15x. The inner term would be negative 2x. Those add together to give me positive 13x. So although it's the right number, it's not the right sign. So what that tells me to do is we just want to change these. We'll make this one positive and this one negative. And now we'll go ahead and we'll check. The outer term is negative 15x. The inner term is positive 2x, which indeed adds up to negative 13x. So that is our correct factoring. So we have three factors now. To solve this equation, we set each equal to 0. So x equals 0, or 3x plus 1 equals 0, or 2x minus 5 equals 0. The first one, luckily, we don't have to do anything at all to solve it. It's already got x by itself. For the second one, we go ahead and subtract 1 to give us 3x equals negative 1. And then we go ahead and we divide by 3. And we don't get a pretty number, but it is a solution of x equals negative 1 third. And then for our last one, we do a similar thing. We add the 5, gives us 2x equals 5. And then we divide by 2. And that gives us our third solution of x equals 5 halves.
So definitely refresh on your factoring techniques if you need to. You want to get ample, ample, ample practice factoring.